Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Week Zero event in Manchester, New Hampshire, checking with team number 2713, the iRaiders, coming out of Massachusetts. Uh, from this team, by the way, I have Tina, Bridget, Sammy, and Kyle. And we're going to be talking about, uh, I love this robot, it's a double wide intake, double wide shooter. Going into the low uh, hab, which I think is really cool, or low hub, which is really cool. Uh, we just saw them play in a match recently, they were scoring really well. So of course we'll go through this entire robot, up into the climber, all this more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So we're going to start out with the uh, intake here. Talk to me a little about some of the concept, design, thought process that's gone into it, uh, and anything uh, you might have changed uh, over the period of the build season. Right. Okay, so the first wonderful thing our robot, of course, is our intake. And so this intake is run by like a series of pulleys and chains with these two rollers here. And originally for our design, the chain here was on the inside of an uh, intake and we only had chain on one side and the pulley on the other side. And that caused our intake to be very floppy and not really stable. So then we changed the design to having the two chains here and that caused our intake to be much more stiffer. And as you can see during the matches, it runs really well in collecting the balls. And we use the bumpers to actually uh, guide, our, guide the cargo for the intake. When you're thinking about rigidity of an intake on there, so you guys, uh, the, the base looks very uh, stable, but obviously there's a little bit of flop back yes. and forth. When you approach this game, uh, what made you think of like, hey, we want to go that route versus like maybe some solid aluminum or something like that? So we did um, debate between aluminum and uh, Lexan. Yeah. And we chose Lexan over aluminum because Lexan does give it a little more bend. So if you crash into another robot or crash into a wall, it flops back into its place and it's not as rigid as aluminum. So as we kind of continue this robot, we're going to go into what's called a snack, I uh, hear, uh, into this. So talk to me a little about uh, the S-curve that's going into uh, the robot, some of the design and thought process on that. Uh, yeah, so, well, it's an S-curve. You kind of bring it up through the robot. We've got, uh, mini Neo, we've got mini Neos running on these, one per each roller on the inside. You can see on one side brings it up from the intake to the upper snack, which actually brings it way up towards the flywheel, which would eventually end up driving. We've actually got some really interesting autonomous code using some sensors there to just automatically bring it up from the intake towards the upper bound wherever you can, and just try to make sure everything's full and as close to the flywheel as possible, which I'm very proud of. Um, yeah. When you were approaching uh, th this cargo piece here, so this ball is very different than the infinite recharge ball, right, from yeah. a couple years ago. So when you're looking at like spacing out your rollers and compression, uh, what, what was kind of so some of the thought process in that? And then uh, from an S-curve perspective, what is the big benefit of that versus like a 90 degree turn? Um, as I understand it, the big benefit of having an S-curve versus more of a 90 degree or just sort of going from the same direction is mainly in auto because a lot of the time it's just easier to not have to turn as much. As well as during teleop, um, it's usually you're getting ba balls from outside of the hub, so it's easier to go out to the hub and then back into it to shoot it. So we don't have to turn as much. We don't have to spend much time on that. We don't have to worry as much about burnout on the motors. Uh, next up, we're going to go a little bit more uh, into the shooting mechanism. I'd love to hear more about the double wide concept uh, that you're doing from a shooter perspective. Uh, and then uh, you went into the low uh, hub as well too, talking about some of the thought process strategy behind that too. Yeah, so um, with the way that we have our output working here is we have two Neos and we wanted to, and we really wanted to make priority that there would be enough space that we could get two balls out at once, therefore um, maximize the amount of points that we got. Um, so, we use, so, we use these, so we use these mechanic wheels so then we would be able to um, help push them out. Um, one of the big parts of this from a, dr from a software design is that we wanted to focus on keeping it, is that we wanted to focus on keeping it for the driver because, uh, so we have um, two drivers, so we are, have two drivers. The second one pr works on 
figuring out um, what speed that we want to get this out from the distance. And um, the way that the speed works on this kind of allows us to go a little further back or be right there, so it gives us some flexibility. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Uh, when I was watching your robot uh, in the match, it did look like you weren't necessarily right up against it. I think it's going to be a unique feature we don't see amongst many teams going for low, so mm -hmm. I love to see the versatility. Uh, in that, when you were approaching the game, uh, you know, early on, if you go on like Cheat Delphi or something like that, you, you saw a lot of talk about like approaching uh, the low only. But we haven't seen a lot of teams do it, right? Mm -hmm. So, for your team on there, when you were looking at like the priority of between climbing and intaking and doing cycles, uh, what's the thought process behind that? Was it mostly like, hey, we just want to get as many cycles as possible for the RP? Yeah, so one of our mentors, Ty, he actually has this um, really great, he has this really great um, way of thinking when it comes to robotics is that we don't want to stretch ourselves too thin yeah. in terms of what we can do. And we want to be able to do a few things very well and we think that'll get us pretty far. So our goal was go for the low goal because it'll cause less bounce. It's more likely to get in. And if we can keep on repeating that and doing that really well, then we'll be able to um, maximize the amount of points that we have and um, make sure that we can do and do that one thing the best. Ty's a pretty good guy, I'll give you yeah, that. So you got some good thoughts on that. So uh, let's wrap up on your robot here, talking about your uh, climber. Uh, one of the more unique uh, custom climbers we've seen uh, this year so far. So love to hear a little bit more about some of the thought process, the design that's gone into it. Uh, some of the custom work as well too is really neat. Yeah, so we decided to have two one-stage climbers on either side uh, with a two-by-two two, uh, al aluminum first stage that stays still and a one-by-one one polycarbonate second stage, which is kinetic. And so we have printed blocks up here and down here, which keeps this able to stay in the middle. And, uh, and this is made of polycarbonate, so we were able to drive in. And if this hits the bars, then it won't be the end of the world. It's able to bend and move as we want it to. And so we have a timing belt, which goes from the 18th tooth gear to the 36th tooth gear at the bottom right there which when this moves clockwise, it raises up, and counterclockwise, it raises down, pull, um, pulling up the robot. And at the bottom of this, we have another three print down here, which clamps this timing belt to the one by one bar, so that it's able to stay still when it is pulling up and down. And then we attach this subsystem to the snack on the side up here and down here, and the motor is mounted down there too, so it is not actually on the chassis is on the snap part of the robot. We've seen a lot of teams uh, who are going for like the, the mid uh, rung go with more of a climber in the box or something mm -hmm. like that. Why was it important to your team to make a custom setup uh, that was specific for your team? Well, we felt it was good to have like knowledge for like future generations yeah. of kids who know how to do this and do like the custom parts of it. Like at the top here, we made the double hook part. So in the perfect scenario, we could drive onto the bar on this because the center of gravity is right about here, so that would be like most even climb, so we would have to move up the least for, to get off the ground, but then we also decided to have it on this side too. So, um, worst comes to worst, we could drive on that side and it would work. But we felt like it was good for, um, because a lot of our group does not, um, is new on the team, they're like sophomores, they're freshmen, so it was good that they know how to build these and we don't have to depend on like pre-built stuff or out of the box climbers to climb in the future. Well, iRaiders uh, looking really good here. By the way, this is one of the Open Alliance teams, so if you haven't seen a lot of these teams featured here on FUN, make sure you check out iRaiders and the build blogs to learn more about them. Thanks a lot for taking time to tell us about your robot, and of course, good luck here uh, during the competition season. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.